There we go. Hello, hello to all my wonderful friends coming on. I'll wait till you all come on just to say hello to you and pray with you today and talk about our precious, wonderful Jesus today. So I'm going to wait and then we'll administer and read your names and say hello to you and read your comments. So there you are coming on already. Hello to Karos, Patricia. God bless you, Patricia. And uh, hello to Everton. Let me know where you're from, by the way, when you when you come on. Hello, Dale um, and Benito. How are you? And hello, Shawana Lee from Houston, Texas. And hello to Rita and Sony. Betty, I pray the Lord is blessing you really good today. And Rosemond, let me know, like I said, where you're from, will you? Shauna Lee, God bless Shauna Lee. And Un um, Undu, I hope I'm saying your name right. Hello to you, God bless you. And Van from Montreal, and Rita from Corpus Christi. Hello, German, God bless you, brother. And Christine from New York, and Marinana, Mariana, excuse me, from San Antonio, and Danica from Maryland. There's one from Thailand. Hello to you. Hello, Suzanne from Canada. Kenya, Joyce, God bless you. And from North Carolina, Claudia. One from India, Michael, God bless you, my goodness. They're coming from everywhere, Lubbock, Texas. Hello to Michelle, hello to Anita from Tennessee and Ezo Buke from Nigeria. I hope I'm saying these names properly, but anyways. From Uganda, hello to you and Brenda from Saginaw. I used to come preach in Saginaw years ago. I need to come back to Michigan. Somebody from Zambia. I've been to Zambia, love to come back. Hello from Malaysia, bless your heart and from Saskatchewan, Canada, and to Rowena from the Philippines. Well, I have some wonderful uh, men of God with me, and I'd like him to say hello. First, Pastor Tony Suarez. God bless you all. God bless you, Pastor Benny. It's an honor to be with you today. Well, I'm very glad, and you, I just met, I only met Pastor Tony for the first time yesterday. And what a blessing he's been, and uh, told me an amazing uh, thing that happened with his family. Very, very touching. Maybe you can share some of it in just a little bit. And dear David Hernandez, these are well. two preachers and David is driving me today. So he's being very careful today. Very, very <laughs> careful. But you're a good driver, David. Thank you, sir. David Hernandez is one of the most dynamic preachers today. Young people, you need to hear this young, young man. How old are you, David? I'm 29. 29 with fire in his bones. And Pastor Tony, you're an incredible minister of the gospel, brother. Well, thank you, Pastor. No, I want you to tell the people in just a second what you were telling me. That's so precious what God has done with this wonderful young man. But let's talk about the love of Jesus. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height or depth, or any other creature, shall be able to separate you and I from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Meaning that all of God's love is seen through His Son. You know, when you read the Old Testament, you don't see that love. You see the law. But when Jesus came, He revealed the love of God. And you think about this. What would cause God to even give the law about His love? You know, when I read the Old Covenant, I think about one thing. Look how He loves His people. Why would God be so uh, meticulous in giving such details in giving them the Ten Commandments and the hundreds of regulations on how to serve him if he, if he did not love them and the love of the Father I mean goodness you know if you put just if you think about this and you put yourself in the Lord's place he brought them out of Egypt they saw his glory and power. He, he divides the Red Sea for them. 
and now they decide to forsake him and build a calf. And yet he did, he did not destroy them. He would he forgave them over and over and over and over. Well, that's love. Led them through the wilderness when they rebelled. That's love. Gave them the promised land when they were when they worshipped idols in the promised land. That's love. And kept sending them prophets repeatedly. That's love too. And sending them to Babylon. That's real love to preserve them as a nation. Had Israel not gone to Babylon, they would not have been preserved. And people don't seem to really think about that. Because had they stayed in the land, they would have mingled with the people of the land. And the very fiber of the Jewish race would have been gone. So God sends them to Babylon to preserve them, to fulfill his word to them. It's amazing to me. So the love of God, the Bible says, I, and I, Paul writes, I am, see, I want to remind you today of this. And this is one of the strongest I mean, if you think about it, it's so such a strong message. I am persuaded. Now, Paul is speaking by the Spirit. He says, I am persuaded that neither death nor life. So when you die or when you live, God loves you no matter where you are. Nor angels or principalities or powers. If all the angels stood before God's throne and demanded he would stop loving you. He'd say no. And angels don't have that. I mean, think about this. Angels don't even have an idea what it's like to be loved. God doesn't love the angels. It says, for God, for God to love the world. Angels have no, no ability to even receive love because angels have no soul. Angels have no emotions. Angels cannot know by revelation God's love or God himself. Did you know that? Did you know that angels don't do cannot know the Lord? They have no capacity to know the Lord. The only way they know him is by watching how he deals with you, the church. I want to say it again. The only way angels know the Lord is by the way he deals with us. It says so in Ephesians 3:10. It says very, very clearly that God has revealed his wisdom through the church to the principalities and powers. So the angels don't know God till they see his acts in his church and his people. No angel ever said, I love you, Lord. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God looked and said to an angel, I love you with an everlasting love, but he loves you. And today that is what I want to remind you because this, was, this, will, this will liberate you. The love of Jesus. I'm persuaded, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor anything present, nor, in, nor anything in eternity, nor anything in the heavens or below the earth can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The love of the Lord Jesus, the mercy of the Lord Jesus. And an and old song, oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, vast, unmeasured, boundless and free, rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me, underneath me, all around me is the current of thy love. Isn't that powerful? And that love is daily. Every single day he reveals it to you. So today I want you to rest in the fact you are really loved. Jesus dearly loves you. This can heal you so fast from rejection. This will heal you so quickly from wounds in the heart or whatever you're going through to know that God really loves you and so cares for you, cares for the details in your life. Remember, it says, casting all your care on him. He cares for you. Well, please know today, all is well because he loves you. Remember that, that Shunammite woman? Oh, watch that boy right there, thank you. I was just telling my good friend David to watch the drivers on the, on the highway were in the car again. I love talking to you, we're in the car. And yes, I want to believe God with you today, that God will touch you, will heal you and set you free. But when you know his love, then you'll relax. You know why people are not healed? 
because they get all tied up with themselves and forget that God loves them so they can't relax because they're begging ooh, ooh, they beg a man of God years ago said there's no begging in love isn't that powerful guys there's no begging in love you don't have to beg and it's true when people beg it's because they don't know how how, how much they're loved when you when you know the love of God everything goes fear goes confusion goes then you rest in his love you rest in his arms he he said to us I love thee with an everlasting love that that's the fact his love never changes his love is not conditional read first Corinthians 13 it says love never gives up everything else will go but not love he is love love is a person his name is Jesus love became flesh his name is Jesus so today just rest in that no matter what you're going through no matter what troubles you're facing all will be well remember that woman the Shunammite woman she came to Elisha the prophet and all the way she was saying all is well when her when her son had died all is well she said she trusted that all will be well and she did not know the love of God all she knew is the prophet had said to her you'll have a son and she did and he became a teenager he went to help his father on his farm and he died right after that when he got he felt pain and he didn't feel well and next thing you know he was gone and the mother left looking for the man of God Elisha and she said did I not say to you do not deceive me why did you tell me to have a son and then he goes as you know after he sent Gehazi and said put the staff on the boy and nothing happened because probably Gehazi on the way must have said hello to somebody because you know uh, Elisha said don't talk to nobody maybe he talked and lost the anointing but anyways Elisha goes there and God raised that little boy from the dead and and again here's a woman whose faith was not shaken think about us why is our faith shaken when we know the love of God she did not know the love of God but we do we're his children and today I want you to know he absolutely loves you nothing can shake that nothing can change that no angels no demons nothing in this world or nothing in eternity will ever change the love of God you know the old hymn the love of God so rich and pure so measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints or angel song you can't even sing about that love nor can you describe that love if we with ink it says the ocean fill and were the skies uh, of parchment made to write the love of God you'd run out of space it says it's not enough space to 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 write what his love is all about so I am talking to someone today I see someone from Guyana and people are coming on still hello Morvet and hello Alina and I'm talking maybe to someone that needs to hear this message maybe today you're struggling with some disease rest in the love of Jesus he will heal you I promise you you know I've seen people in our crusades struggle and beg and none of them ever got healed but when they gave up and rested and just said Lord I trust you God healed them and usually when people rest when people kind of say okay Lord it's your will not mine they 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 forget themselves and pray for someone else and that's when God heals them so when people struggle they drown if you go swimming and people struggle they go down if they rest they float so today rest in his love and know he loves you so if I'm talking to someone struggling because your son is doing drugs it's gonna be all right God has promised you deliverance for your children his love is so strong he'll never break that promise to you ever but you have to wait and trust him it's all about waiting upon the Lord you have to wait and trust him 
You think I am immune from trouble? Of course not. I think the more you do for God, the more the enemy attacks you. And I have to remind myself, Jesus really loves me. He will never condemn me. He will never cut me off. No matter how bad I am, no, ma no, ma no matter what you do to him. Not that you go do it, because if you love him, your love will not allow you to go and hurt the Lord. That's what keeps us from sinning, knowing that he loves us and we love him because of his love. We all go through, you know, challenges in life. I have, you have. And uh, when I went through a very serious challenge in life years ago, I was walking, on, just walking out of my room. And you know, when we go through challenges, our prayer life struggles and all that. And I was walking out of my room and I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, I'm just waiting for you to come home, Benny. And I began weeping. That was a few years back. And I thought, Lord, how is it possible that you love me so much when I'm not exactly, <laughs> you know, uh, myself right now? But he said, I have written you on the palms of my hands. I will never forget you even though you may forget me. Think about what love that is, even though you forget me. Now think about your children. I want to ask you a question, Pastor Tony. Come yes, on closer. Sir. Yes, sir. How much do you love your children? Uh, with everything I have. Can they do wrong? Of course they can. They can <laughs> yeah, do wrong, but, 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 it, but, but it doesn't cancel love. It doesn't love. cancel your love. It doesn't affect the love at all. And, and if they, you know, when they grow older, and my kids have grown older now, and they'll sometimes say things to hurt you. Yes. Does it change your love? Doesn't change Never. your love. Never. Now, you don't have babies yet, but Not yet. You, you've got a little girl coming. On the way, yes. You, you'll know way more about this than, than maybe you do now, about loving. Because you know, as, a, as, a, as a parent, you learn, like, if I love them this much, if I don't retaliate this much, I'll never forget, you know, my Tasha. I was so upset with her one time and I wanted to spank her. And she said to me, she used to speak with an uh, uh, uh. She said, just a second, dad. You tell me I'm like you. I said, yes, and I was really upset with her. She said, she was just a little girl, maybe like 10 years old. She said, you tell me I'm just like you. I said, yes. She said, spank yourself. <laughs> How can you spank your child? But everything in me just melted, you know, when she said that. And my precious Lily, when I was so upset with her one time, because they do bad things, you know, kids, all that. And I was about to, you know, discipline her. And she said, Daddy, that's not like you to do that. <laughs> and just broke me up and melted me. Think about God. Yes. When we go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Immediately, it's gone. Amen. My son Joshua yesterday, you know, he said something he shouldn't have said. And I was upset with him and hurt a little bit. And then he sent me a message about an hour later. It took, it took him a whole hour to apologize. A message said, Dad, I'm sorry. I was just having a bad moment. I said, I forgive you already. You know? And that's with our children. Think about God. Yes. Now, please, can you tell the people what you told me a few moments ago about your, well, I was, your, I was telling your, Pastor your wife? Yes, sir. I was telling Pastor Benny the blessing that God has brought into our, into my life and my kids life now in the last three and a half years I buried my father and 15 months later I buried my wife Jessica uh, the mother of my three children and we had no hope we didn't know what was and, next and please we, go ahead and tell them what happened uh, she, she was she was uh, diagnosed with leukemia in February and passed away six months later that was two and a half years ago and I travel preaching and I have three babies at home and we had to make a decision as a family that we didn't understand what we were going through. We didn't understand why this happened, but we were going to trust God. That didn't mean we'd have every answer, but we were going to trust God with the impossible. And, and God helped us. God, even, even on Jessica's deathbed, my children came to her deathbed to say goodbye. And in the same time they said goodbye, they said, mommy, we know you always wanted to see us get saved. We know you wanted to see us get baptized. And we're gonna be baptized at your funeral. Amen. And at her funeral, I baptized my children. The day of her burial, I buried her in the ground, but I buried my children in the waters of baptism. One symbolized death, the other symbolized new life. And even in the midst of the worst day of our lives, God gave us new hope and a new life. And I'm, I was telling Pastor Benny, I'm, I'm getting married in December. I met someone 
who had gone through the same thing, had lost her spouse to cancer nine years ago, raising two kids on her own. And at first when we would go to dinner and talk, we had pain. We, what we had in common was pain. But now it's not pain that has us together. It's a hope for a future. It's an amazing present and it's, and it's a testimony that God makes all things new. So to the person watching that is in a hopeless situation that says everything's dead and I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, you trust that same God that you held on to yesterday because he's not just the God of yesterday, he's the God of your today and he's the God of your tomorrow. And I am a living witness that you can live through hell and still smile because joy comes in the morning Amen. and not just M-O-R-N-I-N-G, Pastor, but in the M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. In the morning, in the sadness, God's going to give someone joy again. Tony, precious, what you just shared. And by the way, this wonderful man of God has a church in Virginia Beach. I travel full time. We used to pastor oh, Virginia no, oh, Beach. Oh, you used to have a church. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I travel full time and... Um, just, I'm honored to be with you today, though. Well, today I'm, very, I'm very happy to meet <laughs> dear Pastor Tony. I'm just so blessed. David, you want to say something before we pray about the love of God? Uh, I'm just enjoying Don't everything. take your eyes off the road. No, though. sir, I won't. I'm going to keep looking. <laughs> yes. Well, but I, please. Well, I think what, what you were talking about was so powerful about how he said, I love you with an everlasting love. And so the love that he has is not based upon our nature or what we do or our circumstances. The love that God has for us is based upon himself. I love that scripture that says, he is faithful even when we are not, for he cannot deny who he is. That's right. And so his love is based upon his intrinsic eternal nature. And because it's based upon his own nature, his love is reflective and it's just like him. It's eternal, it's steadfast, it's unchanging, it's immovable, it's present in every single moment of every day. I like to say that the mercies of God are not just new every morning, they're new every moment. And his love is restored constantly, even when we face those situations where we think we failed him. His love is with us, even in those situations where we face tragedy. And so I'm thankful that his love sustains us because it's based upon his nature. David, bless you. And Pastor Tony, thank you. And now I want to pray with you. Yes. And I want you all to say all is well. See, uh, Sean, he says, thank you for the encouragement. Um, Debbie says her husband is in the hospital, been there for three weeks. Uh, remember me in your prayer, says Yvette. Wow. James says, truly Holy Spirit ordained broadcast. Well, we just want you in here. Patricia needs healing for bronchitis. Uh, well, I want to just let believe God. And can you pray? You pray first, please, Pastor Tony, for yes, them. Sir. Just stretch your hands and pray for the people. Father, I thank you for everyone that is tuned in. And by the authority of your word and the power that's in the name of Jesus, we declare that we have as much right to the promise of the whipping post as we do the cross of Calvary. Amen, Lord. So we speak healing. We speak deliverance. Amen, Lord. I speak joy and restoration. Father, I thank you that today, for those watching, you're making, you're not just restoring what was lost, but behold, you're making all things new. Amen. And I thank you for an anointing for new, Amen. for newness coming Amen. on the people of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I believe with all my heart, every need will be met today. Let your love take over, Lord. Let your love fold them as a blanket. In the mighty name of Jesus, be made whole, sweet people of God. Be made whole. I rebuke disease. I rebuke that cancer in Rachel in the name of Jesus. She is whole. All of you are whole in Jesus' mighty name. Be made whole in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, be made whole. Be free from your, your bondage. Be free from that need be free from that problem and that challenge that peace rule your heart in the name of jesus today amen and amen blessings to you thank you for watching today and share this broadcast with other people will you because we need to be reminded jesus loves you remember the old song jesus loves me this i know i think we need to keep singing it to ourselves because it's true his love is forever bless you all Shalom.